And I went back to Townsville and I, I sometimes I regret leaving Townsville because I had 27 state kids champions and I went to try my, my luck somewhere else. And I finished up coming across a young kid, Stephen Holland, who was 15 years of age. And I started to put the work into him like I'd seen from the different coaches with my own philosophy. Right. Mate, he is the best 1,500 metre swimmer, the best distance swimmer the world has ever seen. Wow. His cardiovascular system, I had him tested by Professor Cotton in Sydney after he was going through it. 15, he broke two world records in the one race. Went on to Yugoslavia, Yugoslavia, Belgrade, Yugoslavia, 1973. And there, he broke two world records in the one race. Again, beat the Americans. Um, he actually, I thought it was a funny race, mate. He comes out, this 15-year-old kid comes out, surrounded by all the Yanks. Rick DeMont, you know, uh, John Kinsella. Yeah. They're all there. They're all there. And Brad Cooper, the Australian, I was also coaching Brad at the time, who was beaten by Rick DeMont only on a, on a technicality when I say that because uh, DeMont uh, won the race, won the 400 freestyle in 1972, but got DQ'd because he hadn't put down that he was on an asthma spray. Yeah. Or US Swimming hadn't put down that he was on an asthma spray. He was... He was one of the greats, Rick DeMont, you know, the way he negative split everything. He, yeah. bought something, he bought something new into the sport of swimming. There's people that do that, you know. Yeah. Anyway, Holland walks out. Shy, skinny, nervous, 15 years of age at the World Championships in Yugoslavia. There's a white ring surrounds his lips. The blood's drained. He's, he's like this. But, mate... I'm there waiting for him, eh? The gun goes, metamorphosis occurs. <laughs> and this shy, skinny kid becomes a destructive fighting unit, more dangerous than the Iraqi Scud missile or ocean predator. <laughs> and away he goes. 800 metres, mate. He tumbles and breaks the world record. That's it for me. I'm out of the grandstand, straight up into the grandstand where all the Yank coaches are. Get up there amongst them, look them in the eye and say, well, get that into your fellas. <laughs> They're cheering, I'm cheering. It's just head, and there's a bit of banter going on between coaches and I'm giving it to them. Stephen comes in at the end of the 1500, I'm about to go and pummel these fellas and say, well, there's our goal. What does Stephen do? tumbles and goes again. <laughs> the rest of the field know what's happening. They tumble and chase him. First time in the history of the International 1500 has the 30 lapper become a 32 lap race. <laughs> Mate, they come up to 32 laps. What does Steve do? He tumbles and goes again. Oh, Jesus. The, the rest of the field are not so stupid. They stop. And a white clad official jumps in on top of Steve and shakes him. And I, the Yanks are there, they're look, I'm looking at them and I just turn to them and say, look, maths is not Steve's best subject. <laughs> but I'm telling you, that kid, he should have swam 1430 back there in 1976. But I, I had a, a family, a, a new family. I was married in 19... 74 and I had a one door, door one year old daughter yeah and um, there was no money in coaching in Australia in those days and I had to go back to teaching phys ed, physical education for a living so I was up at five o'clock in the morning coaching go straight from the pool to education come back to the pool get home at 7 38 o'clock at night and mate I I I was just wrecked, wrecked and my wife's there. And I was no, I was just falling asleep at the table, mate. And we had a one-year-old baby. And yeah. I, I went and said, look, I, I saw Steve. I said, mate, I can't take you to the Olympics. It's 12 months to go. I'm sorry. But, you know, I get a marriage to, to look after and I've got a family to support. And so I stopped 
and that's when he went to America for a short period of time with all the programs we were doing, which I'd stolen North Gambrel and Sherm Shabor and, yeah. you know, we all do that as coaches. We oh, all yeah. pitch pieces out of everyone. And, sure. And um, trained with, with Brian Goodell, Mark Schubert there at Mission Viejo. Mm. And they saw the type of work that, that Steve was doing and saw how fast he was doing it. And that's what I think, that's one of the reasons why Goodell, Brian Goodell, is a great swimmer. I don't know, you know, a great swimmer. Oh, Olympic champion, you can't get much better. Yeah. Can't get much better. And, um, but they saw, they learned. They saw what Holland was doing and all of a sudden, go to the Olympic Games, Holland gets bad advice, just take it out easy. Mate, he wasn't that sort of swimmer. Mm. The kid was a bloke, go to the lead, boom, and handle it and finish him off. Because if he swam 59 for the first lap, he'd do 59 for the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth. He had one pace, that's all. Yeah. One pace. And I, to this day, I honestly believe he should have swum 14.30 way back then. Jesus. Mate, he was a great, 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 one of the great Australian swimmers, but never, ever got an Olympic gold medal because he was denied by a great swimmer who deserved it, who learnt the lesson, Schubert. Yeah. And, and they learnt the lesson. They saw what he was doing, how fast he was swimming, said, we've got to do this. Yeah. So... He got beaten there by Hackett, Bobby Hackett, and uh, and Brian Goodell, of course, was the the winner. 